I'm going to tie one of the most famous of all salmon flies, and that's a stoat's tail. Quite a simple fly, but also has probably caught countless salmon down the years. So I'm using a, a single hook here. This is actually a mustad black nickel. Uh, although you can tie it on doubles, trebles, or tubes, or whatever you want. So I'm going to tie in a bit of silver oval here and take that down. Now, where you stop is up to yourself, style-wise. I'm going to stop here, of opposite the point, so make it sort of like a short stylized play, but you could go right back here to the back of your uh, of your barb. So, I'm going to put on a few turns of that, just to make a tag or tip then as I tie it in I'm going to tie it forward again up to the return eye and then take it underneath and go backwards because it's going to form a rib as well Tying thread and just even out the body here. And um, that's partly because I'm going to wrap a silk body afterwards, but also because I'm going to put on a golden pheasant tail here, and I want to get it up close to the level of my tinsel because otherwise it's going to kick it up. So I take a golden pheasant topping here. And add that on and keep that fairly short. I'm going to tie that back to the uh, the back of our tag there. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this here, uh, topping off. But I'm going to cut it off further up than you'd think, maybe back here, because I'm going to use it to help to level the body out as we go. So uh, take the scissors and take that off. As you see it's off here roughly at the level of my return eye. And then I'm going to just wrap my tie and silk. I'm holding all together here with my finger and thumb and I'm going to wrap my tie and silk over all of that to create a nice smooth underbody as such. Apart from this bit that sticks out here. I'll get rid of that. So take a bit of black silk or rayon or whatever you want to call it. Floss. I have a length here that's maybe what 10, 12 inches or so. And I'm gonna put it, double it, put it onto my tie and thread and allow that to slide down. So that I'm now wrapping a double strand to get to the back I'm sort of wiggling it out to flatten it out and extend the width say of the uh, silk that I'm wrapping on so it's not thick but it's wide and then return that to the front of the fly and tie it in. I'm just going to fold that back on itself and put a couple of wraps just for added security there. And nick that off. So, if you want, you can now burnish your silk, although it's not necessary on a fishing fly, I suppose. But I'm using here an agate dog's tooth uh, burnisher. Although, if your nails are nice and smooth, you can use the back of your nail as well as a the burnished silk and just flattens it and evens it all out. So then we take our silk, sorry, our uh, tinsel and wrap that forward in about four to five turns, tying it in on the last turn just as it comes around on my side. And nick that off. 
off a couple of turns across it to hold it in place. So, next we're going to put on a throat. So for the throat we want a bit of a black hackle. Now you can use cock hackle if you want, but what I'm going to do is use uh, a little bit of, uh, of a hen soft hackle because uh, it's easier to work with. And uh, there's two ways of doing that. In another video I showed you how to take do it by tying in uh, little V's uh, or you can actually strip off one side of it or a portion of one side of it uh, and make a little bunch squeeze it together and then this one's actually going to be quite short get that underneath and pinch it in place scissors and pulling down the ends of it. I'm just going to nick that off and that is our throat in place. A little bit of wax there and just tie that down. One bit where I didn't like. So stoat's tail uh, is meant to be tied with stoat but uh, I'm going to tie it with this, which is Black Arctic Runner. So I'm going to take a bunch of Arctic Runner. Now if you look at Arctic Runner, whenever you take it off, there's a button. There is some degree of soft under fur, very, or very short, but there's actually a very few wispy tips on it. So in the case of this fly, I don't want that, so I'm going to remove that. And as I said, hold it by the tips, remove the shortest of the fibres see how thick of a bunch that is and now you could tie that on as it is with sort of like this tapered or if you prefer you can use a hair stacker so pack your little bunch in to a hair stacker this one here is a griffin which I quite like uh, it's metal uh, and the two parts sort of move for me so I, I kind of quite like it uh, so we'll uh, once we've that tamped down, then uh, what we're going to do, take the section, as you can see these ends are all nice and tight now. So we grab them by the tip, and then we're going to set that up for length and measure it. So uh, if I swap it between finger and thumb, Choose your length. Now, as I said you can choose that to tie that in long or short. It's up to yourself. I'm going to tie it in out to the length of the tail, but that's just personal preference for this one. A couple of turns to hold it in place. Uh, and then what we want to do is grab uh, the grab the tips of the wing, and I'm going to grab the base of it here. Uh, and I'm going to uh, lift the two up so that it gets everything up onto the top if that makes sense so I grab this grab these and sort of pull them together and pull them tight and lift and it should rotate any fibers that had fell off the side as you were tying it on a couple more turns to keep that in place so now uh, to make a neat head on this. You can use scissors uh, but this is another way you can do it here. So you take our super glue and I'm going to put uh, super glue onto uh, the sort of tag ends of this here and I'm going to give it a wee second just so that it uh, it sort of sets itself a little bit and dries and then what I'm going to try and do hopefully it'll work for me, is to take a blade, a scalpel blade, or you could use one of these, or you know, like a, an old a Wilkinson sword razor blade, something nice and sharp, and I'm going to cut 
down through that. If you try to do that without the super glue on it, they'll sort of splay and go all over the place. But because you super glued it, it should cut through it fairly straight. And then if there's the odd straggler, you can just flare it. And that should get that out of the way. So again, I'm going to take now we have a, a cut face here of our of our hair. So I'm just going to add a little bit of super glue to that, and that then will soak into the cut ends, and they should not pull out. So all that remains now is for us to create a head. So, as you notice, uh, I'm quite far back from the eye on this one. Uh, that again is up to yourself, but uh, it would allow you to, uh, uh, if you want to put on a pearl knot, to do that there. So, uh, we're just, uh, just going to wrap on the head, taking our silk around in whatever direction is necessary, just to even out the head. And then I'm going to put on a half hitch and hold that. And once I think that has set a little bit into it, I'll just nick that off. And uh, then take a bit of super glue. This is again on a brush. Just get the excess off that and then I'm going to sort of varnish the head of this with super glue. Now when you're doing this use a good one. So I would use uh, Loctite for this here. Uh, so I've tried the, the cheaper ones. I use the cheaper ones for tying pike flies because they're nice and watery and they get into the materials but for, for these sorts of things Loctite seems to produce less uh, white sort of residue you're doing it. So that is uh, our stoat's tail. And all that's required now is that whenever uh, that dries I'll take uh, some Sally Hansen hard as nails clear and I'll put that onto, onto it to give it a final coat or two and that should give me a nice smooth should give me a nice smooth black head but uh, a stoat's tail.